Okay, so let me let me uh, um, shall I shall I start? Okay, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep this uh, I'll keep this short and sweet. But um, just just to sort of introduce myself, so uh, my name's Larry Cable. Uh, I'm a recaptured employee of Oracle, um, uh, and um, I'm an architect in the Java platform group at Oracle. Uh, primarily in the area that we call serviceability, which is probably the dullest area of the Java platform to work in. Um, <clears throat> and my uh, current uh, role within the Java platform is, is somewhat bifurcated. Um, ser serviceability in, in the Java platform covers a variety of things like uh, the debugging APIs, the Java management APIs, um, uh, Java flight recorder, um, integrated uh, logging capabilities, um, dot, dot, dot. So basically, basically it's all of the, the sort of serviceability and visibility into the function of the JVM primarily. Uh, as it operates. Um, and of course, that uh, the JVM has been around for, you know, about half of my, actually probably two thirds of my career. Um, and in, in pretty much over that period of time, these various features have evolved in an ad hoc fashion um, and in a fashion that makes some fundamental assumptions about the environment in which the JVM operates those being fundamentally shared namespaces like uh, you know, UID, process ID, mount namespace, networking namespace, et cetera, persistence of uh, file systems beyond the lifetime of the JVM, et cetera. Um, and of course, all of those, all of those um, axioms are no longer axiomatic in, <laughs> in, in the container world. Um, which poses a, a number of problems um, for, for at least three personas who I will attempt to represent here. So persona number one is for humble serviceability architects such as myself um, trying to build um, a, a language runtime that will uh, operate in uh, both a host environment and a containerized environment. The, the second persona is, uh, and this is another one that applies to me also, as a, a cloud vendor uh, who wishes to provide um, a, a, a rich um, telemetry environment in their cloud for customers deploying applications uh, that are containerized in that cloud. And last but not least, the, the poor long suffering application developer who, um, who also has to build their applications uh, and uh, potentially deploy them in containerized environments. And, and where all of these personas come together in their um, relative misery is much around the, the, the decoration or identity of, um, in some cases, forensic artifacts that, uh, that uh, their, their runtimes create uh, that uh, you know, persist beyond the lifetime of the normal or exceptional operation of their, their applications. And um, what that really boils down to is, uh, particularly in cloud, that scale is, you know, I, I'm in the JVM, I'm potentially collecting um, you know, useful information about the normal or abnormal operation or termination of a JVM. And um, in, in capturing that information, uh, information that's, as I say, forensic in nature, so it may, it may ex it normally needs to exist beyond the lifetime of the, of the, the system that's creating it. I need the ability to uh, uniquely identify those artifacts or that meta information um, in such a way that I can correlate that back to uh, the system, the system that created it. Now, in a in a sort of host 
in a in a host environment, you know, I have things like process ID. I have uh, location of the the JVM, etc., the version information from the JVM, and uh, you know, network host name, etc., that I can cons up some sort of uh, you know uh, identity tuple that I can capture somewhere or, um, uh, in either the artifacts that I'm creating, like a core dump or a GC dump or a, an error log that I can then, you know, post-process consume and trace that back to uh, the system, the system that caused it. And, you know, that's a fairly trivial problem at, you know, order of magnitude one system or 10 systems, uh, but becomes a, a little bit uncomfortable when you add a bunch of zeros to that order of magnitude problem. And, and this whole thing is compounded by containerization. So while, while you really don't want uh, the, your runtime uh, system or your application to uh, be too intelligent about its operating environment, um, but obviously, you know, for example, the JVM is, you know, it, it, could, it adjusts its memory footprint and CPU footprint according to you know, what con container constraints are applied to it. The, the, all of three of these personas really struggle to extract a unique identity for their runtime environment in a, in a, in a portable fashion in a container, in a container um, context. Um, so, you know, obviously process ID is no longer useful, right? <laughs> um, and, and really, you know, extracting, extracting the path for where the JVM happens to be installed um, uh, in, in a container isn't very useful either, because really what I want to be able to do, particularly as, as the, 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 the scale increases, I want to be able to say that this version of a service or application deployed on, you know, in this particular context and this particular instance of that deployment was the, was the root cause or the source of this particular uh, telemetry information. And what that really boils down to is some way for all three of those personas to be able to portably and you know, reasonably extract the identity of, of the container, for want of a better description here, image, and also the instance identity of that, uh, of a particular instantiation of that, of that container. And with those two pieces of information, uh, you're then able, all three of those personas are then you know, readily able to capture that identity and persist that identity you know, in application log files, in core dumps, in GC files. Um, you know, we can expose it over our management APIs so that those can be extracted um, uh, you know, external to the container. Um, dot, dot, dot. There's a plethora of, of ways that you can abuse this information, but um, there's, there's really no there's no existing portable mechanism for, for determining this uh, when you're in the context of a container. And so really what, what I'm looking for here is, is some guidance as to, you know, is this something that is in the scope of the, of the runtime spec? I mean, obviously this information is available in the, um, image manifest, at least the digest is available in the image manifest and the, uh, you know, the, the, the runtime engine uh, is responsible for creating the container instance identity. So if there was a simple language independent <laughs> uh, mechanism, uh, and, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just here, you know, uh, representing Java, you know, I would, I would love, I would love, because uh, a lot, we write a lot of our internal code in Golang for our sins. Um, and so uh, it would be nice, it would be nice for uh, language, you know, runtimes in, in any language 
uh, that's uh, that finds itself in a container to be able to extract this ident this you know identity information and and be able to you know use that identity information for you know whatever fair means or foul <laughs> the uh, the consumer uh, feels sees fit to 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 use it. So that that in a nutshell is my is my elevator pitch. We're now on the in the penthouse and um okay <laughs> so a, a lot of the things you talked about are are in the scope of what we would call a container runtime manager as right. opposed to a runtime engine okay and, and and the reason for that is just because we needed to put one together for kubernetes um you know kubernetes of course manages pods deploying yep. containers yep. you know in your clusters and and, and this sort, this sort of stuff has to be done all the time there there are also some other non-Kubernetes uh, uses of the container runtime interface um, that, 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 that do some very similar things to everything you're talking about. Um, it, it, Docker, for example, is a is a runtime. Yep, yep. Container runtime that does a lot of the stuff you're talking about. Um, so there, there's ways, to, I'm not sure in the context of what you're talking about, how do you launch your containers? Are you trying to use run C directly or do you use a container runtime it, we, well, yeah, at, yeah. At, at, a, at a mega corporation such as Oracle, we, it's all of the above, right? Which is why I'm sort of you know, desperately, desperately looking for, um, you know, a, a standard solution as opposed to, a, um, a, you know, a per, a, a per um, implementation uh, yeah, so, each layer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, because I, I don't want to end up having code that's, you know, grubbing about trying to determine if it's running in Kubernetes or Docker or Podman or, you know, Kata containers, dot, 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 right? <laughs> um, right. Although I suspect that that's probably what we'll end up falling back to. But um, uh, I, I thought that this, you know, was a, a, an issue of, of sufficient interest, um, you know, that that I would at least I would at least um, stick my head up over the parapet of the trench uh, to uh, see how, what sort of enemy fire I attract. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I, I think was thinking, I shared some with Phil a couple of weeks, uh, actually several months ago. Now we've had people from the .NET Framework team kind of ask like, how do they know they're even running in a container? How do they surface this so yeah. later when stuff happened? It's not just enough to know that this was in host ABCD3. Like it, it, it actually needs to be something they can know. Oh, what you know, whether it's an Azure, you know, done in framework, or it could be an Azure, it could be AWS, Google, wherever. Right. right. How do they give some kind of meaningful information to know that they've got a bunch of things failing? It all relates to what a you know, an architect could yeah. say, like, oh, well, that was that node over in that environment. So yeah. Exactly. And and it's 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 definitely exacerbated in the in, in the cloud scenario where, you know, you have, you have multiple, you know, telemetry sources that, that you're, you're aggregating somewhere in your system and you want to be able to, you know, do something a little bit like, um, you know, the open, open tracing kind of idea where you can do end to end. Exactly. That's what I would say to woof, um, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, we certainly in, in, in a number of Oracle uh, products, we have a thing called uh, an execution context ID that we a bit a bit like a, a thread or a transaction context that gets propagated, uh, you know, it, it's sort of out of band uh, between, you know, let's say the app server and the database, for example. So we're then able to see that, you know, request XYZ that came through the app server that went through, you know, yep. connection pool five to the to the database node four, uh, and that's where it fell over. You know, we have the ability to do that sort of correlation. And, you know, part and parcel of that is which instance out of this, you know, 200 instances of right. version 54 of my microservice fell on its ass with an out of memory error right and and you know we really have um you know it's it's a bit like we have to sacrifice chickens at, do at sunrise or something like that to it's a different pattern you're, you're you're coming from the you know the war jar you know era where you had session managers that you know for 
for Java instances that were being managed at a web, at a web portal kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Now, and whoa, wait a minute. I just woke up inside a container. <laughs> How does exactly, this work? Exactly. I, I understand the pattern and the issue. And there are a lot of people commiserating with you right now. Yeah, I, 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 I that out. And, and, and you know, every provider has you know a different solution for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, which makes it life miserable for pretty much everybody. Um, <laughs> well, it's an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, that's kind of that's kind of the the problem statement, I think, in in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So. So just to throw this out there, I, I posted it in the chat. I don't know who all uh, has the chat in their whatever way you're connected, but um, you know, the, this is at the total other end of the spectrum. The kernel community, uh, a Red Hat developer has been iterating on this patch set for over two years. So I don't know what that portends as far as when it will end up hitting the, the kernel someday. Uh, but it's exactly kind of the, the solution in the sense of like, ignore how you got here. If you created a container on a Linux kernel, this feature will generate a unique identifier okay. that is available on the audit system. So again, it maps process ID cool. on the host to a unique container uh, identifier, which again, you can read his initial proposal, which, you know, is is basically, I think, correlates some to what you're talking about, that, that there's just a sense in which, how do you even decide something as a container? Because we, you know, at least we're in the OCI community, so most of us would agree on what that is, but you can hack together some shell scripts that create a few namespaces and start a process. And that's a container too. In yes, some that's, that's true. Um, so th this solves it in the sense that, you know, at the Linux kernel level, you end up with, a, with an identifier, no matter if you came through Kubernetes right. or Docker or LXC or whatever you use to get there. There's, there's still, of course, the issue then of correlating that kernel identifier with the, um, you know, with the image associated with it, right? Yeah, yeah. So th this would give you a building block on which some sort of associations would need to be made a, a, a user space layer. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's interesting because it just, it reminded me I'd seen this years ago and it, it, I wondered if it died, but he just refreshed the patch set in January. <laughs> it's um, not dead yet. <laughs> it's not dead yet, so. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It, it's, not, it's not an entire answer to your query, to your uh, complication, but it's, it's maybe part of that in that it gives you an identifier which can then be uh, combined with other data. And I, who was that in the chat? I thought that was, a, you know, an idea of a metadata service is kind of, that was you, Brandon. Uh, yeah, yeah. I noticed in the chat, someone mentioned the the, the downward API in, in Kubernetes, but, you know, when I was doing a little bit of uh, um, sort of, pre-investigation for this, I, I noticed uh, a couple of, of threads in, in the Kubernetes world where people were complaining that the, even the, the downward API doesn't, doesn't expose the, the um, container digest. So it's, not, <laughs> so it's not actually possible to, to, um, to, to get that information um, in, in the Kubernetes environment, or certainly when I at the time that this this thread was created, that probably wasn't the the case. But again, that 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 ends up with um, you know a dependency on your on which container you know engine runtime environment you're you're want you're you know executing in, and you know we uh, it it's a bit problematic you know to start having you know, essentially runtime. If, if this, if you think this is Kubernetes, do this, you know, if it's AWS, do that. Um, it, it starts to get a little bit, a little bit ugly, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's unfortunately the, the state of the art that we're at, that we're at today. 
Well, that's what I was wondering is that something that you can like dip in, you know, where some of the masses are with container D and others, you know, is not to your point, yes, there's lots of different hosts, but maybe they can surface them consistently also, but to know, because inside the container, you obviously don't know that the digest you have to reach out. So I, what I'm hearing you say is like, who am I? You know, what, what, can, what image am I based on? And then there's the others of like, what environment am I in? So if you have the host ID, and I think what I heard you Phil say was like, I, if you could correlate some other piece of data says, well, this host ID is actually associated with, you know, VM name, you know, 22, which somebody can correlate to when that was created in their, their you know, cloud diagnostic scripts or something. Yeah. You have enough breadcrumbs to stitch together the story. Um, but where do you get information like that from? Consistent, yeah, I mean, and it, it shouldn't it, be tied to a particular cluster per se. It, 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 seemed, it seemed to me in my uh, naive worldview that, that, you know, the, the, the entity that is, you know, responsible for, you know, basically starting, starting a container from its, you know, file system image has, you know, has this information, right? It, it or can, or can more readily find that information uh, than any code running in the container, um, and and so, you know, the the obvious quotes the obvious place to me where where this could be injected would be by by the entity that uh, that essentially establishes the container instance uh, um, in you know to in order to execute it um, yeah I, I believe all that information is available at the container runtime interface I believe the, the digest for example all the IDs you need yeah I think it's there um, Depends on what you mean by runtime. If you mean run C, run C has no idea what the image digest is because the root FS is already set up and done long before run C ever gets invoked, which is where the runtime spec right. comes in. I'm talking specifically at the container runtime level, container runtime interface level. Right, but I think the use of the word runtime there is confusing in the context of the runtime it spec. Can be. Right? Yeah, we, we usually, Talk about uh, run C type runtimes as runtime engines as opposed to container runtime. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. My my terminology bad. <laughs> Me no speak of the language. So I think from from the perspective of the runtime specification, the thing that consumes the runtime specification that's run C doesn't have any knowledge of the container ID. Doesn't have any knowledge of the image ID, image digest image layering, it doesn't know anything about that. It's handed a config for how to run a process within a particular root FS that it's also handed. Okay, okay. So we've got to go up stack at least one more layer before we can get that interesting data that you're actually after. Okay. That's, that's what I was thinking. That was really pretty cool what Phil was showing that we could, there, there's at least one service that could get you the, uh, I, did, I didn't know that, that looks really cool. Cool. Well, um, this has been useful to me. Um, it's probably not been very useful to you guys. But <laughs> no, no, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. Shit, at least, at least I've unburdened it, myself. So I. It, it okay. may be as simple as talking to the guy that's doing doing the stuff that Phil with Phil linked, and and ask him if he if he's got any thoughts about integrating with the container runtimes to get some additional information. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, as mentioned, we've got metadata for this stuff, so we can probably right. do it. Right. At the container runtime level, we could probably, you know, provide additional information. Exactly. Okay. If I, if I knew what container runtime you were using, that's what I, that, I know you've got, you might have a plethora. All of them. Yeah. I mean, and of course, from, from, a, from a Java platform perspective, it, we have to support um you know maybe not all of them but all of the interesting ones right for for some definition of interesting which is you know a lot um so <laughs> uh you know we can't just say we run so much better on kubernetes than any of that other stuff uh that would get us in a lot of trouble with the people who own and love the other stuff so unfortunately we have to be a little bit uh, of a switzerland 
um, uh, here. Um, but, uh, you know, um, uh, just to that point on the, yeah, I agree about the, the you know, it host data. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really suggesting exposing host data um, uh, to, the, to the container. I'm, I'm really only suggesting exposing container data to the container. Um, so, um, you know, once, once you've persisted the, the sort of container and instance identity uh, in, in any sort of, you know, uh, e external artifact like a, a core dump or a GC dump or an error file or a log file, you know, the, 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 ex the exterior ecosystem can, uh, you know, can provide the necessary uh, correlating metadata to figure out that, you know, this, this container instance actually was running on that virtual host over there, uh, because that the, the thing that's doing the correlation upstream has both access to the, the container information and also access to the, to the host information, you know, within the sort of trust domain that, 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 that would operate. So I, I don't think there's, you know, the, 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 it's just a matter of convenience that the, 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 the digest identity is there and a container identity is there and somebody, somebody somewhere creates those and, and some of those, uh, you know, some of those identifiers are, uh, you know, universally recognized by the rest of the ecosystem, right? Exactly. Um, um, you know, from, from the repositories down to the, you know, to the nitty gritty. So, you know, it could be, it could be any arbitrary uh, uh, tuples as long as it was possible to, you know, uniquely identify the, the, the image version from which the instance uh, was executing that was responsible for the creation of the of the telemetry. So, so any if you have digest A running in four different nodes, it might be two different regions or whatever. How do you correlate that the failures you're getting was in East region only for some reason? Well, then that comes back to my my sort of point about who who does who knows what and does what. So you know. Um, uh, at, at the at the level of the of the things running in the container, you know they are they are fairly simplistic. They simply emit the telemetry that they would emit anywhere, uh, but suitably tagged with its you know identifiers, and then the the ecosystem surrounding that. You know, for instance, you know, let's say you've got some sort of distributed uh, log ingestion system. Uh, you know, it would be responsible for uh, adding the the additional context to say that you know this. So this log stream came from you know node fifty four and available availability domain five, fault domain one, right? Host three, right? Because it 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 or someone uh, downstream from it has you know sufficient uh, um, visibility and and um, authority to to uh, extract that information. So, I, I totally get the security balance. Like, obviously, we don't want to give out yeah, the host yeah, names yeah. or the IP address, <laughs> but some kind of correlation ID so you can figure yep. that out in a secure way. Yeah, and, and, it, and it needs to, it eventually needs, I think, to tie back to, to the, 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 the image the image and the instance of that image that 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 emitted it because particularly for um you know for for the guys at the at the sort of top of the consumption stack the 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 app developer you know who's who's building you know building containerized software and deploying it on you know whoever their favorite uh cloud vendors cloud or or container runtime they, they, they're the ones that need to figure out that the, in the case of a Java application, that this particular instance ran out of memory on Thursday afternoon at 3 p.m., right? <laughs> it's not much use for them to know that a, an instance of their, of their container, right. containerized mm -hmm. application failed at 3 p.m. <laughs> if they have, 
150 of them. It's just, you know, they're, they're, they're tasked. And, and, and all of this always tends to happen in failure cases where, where you know, someone, someone's job sucks sufficiently because they have to go and figure out why, what broke, where, when, and why. And, you know, making, making the task of, of, of that sort of forensic or pathology investigation harder by making them guess or do a, you know, <laughs> do a, a, um, an order N search of all the possible systems that fell in its ass is... Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, it's a, like I said, it's a balance. You don't want to have to parse every log to figure out who that it ran there. And, exactly, yeah. So it's, 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 you know, it's, an, it's an interesting, it's an interesting challenge and it's, it's one that, 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 that certainly, you know, we in the Java platform, we want to, <clears throat> we really want to make uh, uh, our, our, you know, serviceability capabilities when containerized um, as, um, as consumable as possible relative to those uh, uh, features when running on a, on a bare node. Anyway, I've chewed up a lot of your guys' time, um, which I greatly appreciate. Um, and uh, thanks for, for some of the, the informational links. Uh, I'm going to check this one out. And um, grab them before the session ends. You can't get these after the Zoom call ends, just as a quick tip. Um, we, uh, you know, as you find stuff out, we'd love to hear back what you sure, what you sure, and... uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're on a voyage of discovery here, uh, trying to 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 to, you know, come come up with some features that will make this that, that will make this functional. And and I, I'd really like to see it. I'd really like to see it be language independent, so that you know, no matter you know, even if you're running, you know, Kotlin or Closure. Or some, you know, <laughs> Swift in a container that uh, the the it, it doesn't require um, you know major machinations on behalf of the of the the poor developer or the language uh, runtime to 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 make this stuff just easy to consume. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm done. If you guys are, sounds great. Cool. Well, I appreciate. I really appreciate your time, everyone. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, hopefully, you you've seen the last of me. <laughs> but you never, but you never know. I may come back to haunt you know, <laughs> again. No, seriously. We, you know, whether you have to schedule a call to get back or just send back to the alias. Um, Will do. Love to hear what you find out. Cool. And okay. If there's gaps that need to be done, you know, there's always PRs and always questions or issues. But uh, this is not a unique problem to you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm not alone in my agony. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, thanks, guys. I'm, I'm going to draw. Thanks. Bye. That's all we have on the agenda for this week. If anybody has anything else. If not, folks can have their time back. Good chatting. Thanks, all. Thanks, folks. Here's everyone. Thanks, everyone.